time for House in the Prairie Chapter 2. So, we want our book, we want our trifold, and we want our vocab sheet. So make sure you get all three of those. We're going to use one of our other papers, moving then and now on a different video that you're going to get. Um, that talks about covered wagons, but for now, just these three. So for chapter two, the vocab word we want to focus on is bluff, B-L-U-F-F. -F. Now this is a multiple meaning word and it can be an action word and it can also be a, uh, landform. So when we read this chapter, be thinking about which one of those bluff is. Then our skill for today in our trifold for chapter two is um, sequencing to retell. So we want to do uh, the most important things from our chapter. What happened first, what happened next, then, and finally. So what are the four most important things that happen as the chapter goes along? Um, whenever we are doing main idea, sequencing, retelling, uh, and that kind of thing, we're always using only the main idea, the most important parts, that if they didn't happen, your chapter could not continue on. So we're going to look for those as we go. All right, chapter two, everybody get your book. Chapter two is Camp on the high prairie and it starts on page i think is that right oh no crossing the creek i went to the third chapter i knew that was wrong i've read this so many times so crossing the creek page 16 and 17. when we left off in chapter one they were just coming down into the creek and pod said that's where we're going to camp for the night after they crossed the creek so are you ready? This is a very exciting chapter and kind of scary, but exciting is good. Pat and Patty began to trot briskly as if they were glad to. Laura held tight to the wagon box and stood up in the jolting wagon. Beyond Pa's shoulder and far across the waves of green grass, she could see the trees. And they were not like any trees she had seen before. They were no taller than bushes. Whoa, said Pa suddenly. Now which way, he muttered to himself. The road divided here, and you could not tell which one was the more traveled one. Both of them were faint wheel tracks in the grass. One went toward the west, the other sloped down t downward a little toward the south. Both soon vanished in the tall, blowing grasses. Better go on downhill, I guess, Pa decided. The creek's down in the bottoms. Must be this is the way to the ford. And now a ford is what they call when you cross a stream or a river um, today we have bridges that go across them, but at their time, sometimes they would find a shallow part and they would, uh, roll the wagon directly across it. It might have to float a little bit in the middle part, which is kind of scary. Uh, but that's what they, a ford was a low, shallow area that you could get into the water and get across quickly. He turned Pat and Patty toward the south. The road went down and up and down and up again over gently curving land. The trees were nearer now, but they were no taller. Then Laura gasped and clutched the wagon bow for almost under Pets and Patty's noses. There was no more blowing grass. There was no land at all. She looked beyond the edge of the land and across the tops of trees. The road turned there for a little way, it went along the cliff's top. Then it went sharply downward. Pa put on the brakes. Pet and Patty braced themselves backward and almost sat down. The wagon wheels 
slid onward, little by little lowering the wagon farther down the steep slope into the ground. Jagged cliffs of bare red earth rose up on both sides of the wagon. Grass waved along their tops, but nothing grew on their seamed straight up and down sides. They were hot and heat came from them against Laura's face. The wind was still blowing overhead, but it did not blow down into this deep crack in the ground. The stillness seemed strange and empty. Then once more the wagon was level. The narrow crack down which it had come opened into the bottomlands. Here grew the tall trees whose tops Laura's had seen from the prairie above. Shady groves were scattered on the rolling meadows, and in the groves deer were lying down hardly <clears throat> excuse me, to be seen among the shadows. The deer turned their heads toward the wagon, and curious fawns stood up to see it more clearly. Laura was surprised because she did not see the creek, but the bottom lands were wide. Down here below the prairie, there were gentle hills and open sunny places. The air was still and hot. Under the wagon wheels, the ground was soft. In the sunny open spaces, the grass grew thin and deer had cropped it short. For a while, the high bare cliffs of red earth stood up behind the wagon but they were almost hidden behind hills and trees when Pat and Patty stopped to drink from the creek. The rushing sound of the water filled the still air. All along the creek banks, the trees hung over it and made it dark with shadows. In the middle, it ran swiftly, sparkling silver and blue. This creek is pretty high, Pa said, but I guess we can make it all right. You can see this is the ford by the old wheel ruts. What do you say, Caroline? Oh, whatever you say, Charles Ma answered. Pet and Patty lifted their wet noses. They pricked their ears forward, looking at the creek. Then they pricked them backward to hear what Pa would say. They sighed and laid their soft noses together to whisper to each other. A little way upstream, Jack was lapping the water with his red tongue. I'll tie down the wagon cover, Pa said. He climbed down from the seat, unrolled the canvas sides, and tied them firmly to the wagon box. Then he pulled the rope at the back so that the canvas puckered together um, in the middle, leaving only a tiny round hole too small to be seen through. If you look back at your cover, You'll see that this is what it looks like most of the time, but you could pull these strings here and this would become a little teeny hole, like about that big, um, so that nobody could look out the back of it and that would keep the water out. So Laura and Mary can't see out as they go across, which is, I would think it'd be pretty scary, but we'll see. Mary huddled down on the bed. She did not like fords. She was afraid of the rushing water, but Laura was excited. She liked the splashing. Pa climbed to the seat saying, they may have to swim out there in the middle, but we'll make it all right, Caroline. Laura thought of Jack and said, oh, I wish Jack could ride in the wagon, Pa. Pa did not answer. He gathered the reins tightly in his hands. Ma said, Jack can swim, Laura. He will be all right. Now, in the 1800s, pets were a little different than pets are today. We would never, ever think of crossing a creek and having our dog swim uh, because our pets are kind of like family members, or at least I know my dog is. However, in the 1800s, dogs were working animals. They were there on the farm to help keep uh, foxes and raccoons from stealing eggs and killing chickens. They were on the farms to protect um, the people by barking and announcing if there was a stranger or there were wolves. Uh, so they didn't get treated quite like we did. And they're not being mean by having Jack walk under the wagon. That's just the way it was. The dog would walk next to 
the wagon and it was a working animal just like if they had decided to bring a cow with them the cow would have been tied to the side of the wagon and it would have walked all the way from wisconsin to kansas um that's just the way they did it so i know it sounds kind of mean but they weren't trying to be mean that's just the way people thought the wagon went forward softly in mud water began to splash against the wheels the splashing grew louder. The wagon shook as the noisy water stuck at it, struck at it. Then all at once the wagon lifted and balanced and swayed. It was a lovely feeling. So the water wagon is floating in the water. I don't know if I'd call that a lovely feeling. The noise stopped and Ma said sharply, Lie down, girls. Quick as a flash, Mary and Laura dropped flat on the bed. When Ma spoke like that, they did as they were told. Ma's arm pulled a smothering blanket over them, heads and all. Be still, just as you are. Don't move, she said. Mary did not move. She was trembling and still. But Laura could not help wriggling a little bit. She did so want to see what was happening. She could feel the wagon swaying and turning and the splashing was noisy again. And again it died away. Then Pa's voice frightened Laura. It said, Take them, Caroline. The wagon lurched. There was a sudden heavy splash beside it. Laura sat straight up and clawed the blanket from her head. Pa was gone. Ma sat alone, holding tight to the reins with both hands. Mary hid her face in the blanket again, but Laura rose up farther. She couldn't see the creek bank. She couldn't see anything in front of the wagon but water rushing at it. And in the water, three heads. Pet's head and Patty's head and Pa's small wet head. Pa's fist in the water was holding tight to Pet's bridle. Laura could faintly hear Pa's voice through the rushing of the water. Oh, look at that picture. That's pretty, pretty scary looking, isn't it? That could easily have floated away and they could have all drowned. It sounded calm and cheerful, but she couldn't hear what he was, what he said. He was talking to the horses. Ma's face was white and scared. Lie down, Laura, Ma said. Laura lay down. She felt cold and sick. Her eyes were shut tight, but she could still see the terrible water and Pa's brown um, beard drowning in it. For a long, long time, the water swayed, the wagon swayed and swung, and Mary cried without making a sound, and Laura's stum stomach felt sicker and sicker. Then the front wheels struck and grated, and Pa shouted. The whole wagon jerked and jolted and tipped backward, but the wheels were turning on the ground, Laura was up again, holding to the seat. She saw Pet and Patty's head scrambling wet banks, backs, sorry, climbing a steep bank and Paw running beside them, shouting, Hi, Patty. Hi, Pet. Get up. Get up. Whoopsie daisy. Good girls. At the top of the bank, they stood still, panting and dripping, and the wagon stood still, safely out of, the, of that creek. Paw stood panting and dripping, too, and Ma said, Oh. Charles, there, there, Caroline, said Pa. We're all safe, thanks to a good tight wagon box well fastened to the running gear. I never saw a creek rise so fast in my life. Pat and Patty are good swimmers, but I guess they wouldn't have made it if I hadn't helped them. If Pa had not known what to do, or if Ma had been too frightened to drive, or if Laura and Mary had been naughty and bothered her, then they would have all been lost. The river would have rolled them over and over and carried them away and drowned them, and nobody would have ever known what became of them. For weeks, perhaps, no other person would come along that road. Well, said Paul, it all's well that ends well. And Ma said, Charles, you are wet to the skin. Before Pa could answer, Laura cried, Oh, where's Jack? They had forgotten Jack. 
They had left him on the other side of that dreadful water, and now they could not see him anywhere. He must have tried to swim after them, but they could not see him struggling in the water now. Laura swallowed hard to keep from crying. She knew it was shameful to cry, but there was crying inside of her. All the long way from Wisconsin, poor Jack had followed them so patiently and faithfully, and now they had left him to drown. He was so tired, and they might have taken him into the wagon. He had stood on the bank and seen the wagon going away from the, him as if they didn't care for him at all, and he would never know how much they wanted him. Pa said he wouldn't have done such a thing to Jack, not for a million dollars. Get a break real quick. My throat is getting dry. Oh, there, that's better. If he'd known how the creek would rise when they were in midstream, he would never have left Jack to try to swim it. But that can't be helped now, he said. He went far up and down the creek bank looking for Jack, calling him and whistling for him. It was no use. Jack was gone. At last, there was nothing to do but to go on. Pet and Patty were rested. Pa's clothes had dried on him while he searched for Jack. He took the reins again and drove uphill out of the river bottom. Laura looked back all the way. She knew she wouldn't see Jack again, but she wanted to. She didn't see anything but low curves of land coming between the wagon and the creek, and beyond the creek, those strange cliffs of red earth rose up again. Then other bluffs just like them stood up in front of the wagon. Faint wheel tracks went into a crack between those earthen walls. Pet and Patty climbed till the crack became a small grassy valley and the valley widened out to the high prairie once more. No road, not even the faintest trace of wheels or of a rider's passing could be seen anywhere. That prairie looked as if no humans had ever seen it before. Only the tall wild grass covered the endless empty land and it and a great empty sky arched over it. Far away the sun's edge touched the rim of the earth. The sun was enormous and it was throbbing and pulsing with light. All around the sky's edge ran a pale pink glow and above the, that pink was yellow and above that blue, above the blue, the sky was no color at all. Purple shadows were gathering over the land and the wind was mourning. Pa stopped the, wag the Mustangs. He and Ma got out of the wagon to make camp and Mary and Laura climbed down to the ground too. Oh, Ma, Laura begged, Jack has gone to heaven, hasn't he? He was such a good dog. Can't he go to heaven? Ma did not know what to answer, but Pa said, Yes, Laura, he can. God, that doesn't forget the sparrows, won't leave a good dog like Jack out in the cold. Laura felt only a little better. She was not happy. Pa did not whistle about his work as usual. And after a while, he said, And what we'll do in a wild country Without a good watchdog, I don't know. That was a good, exciting chapter. And sad. Very sad. So, but don't worry. Spoiler alert. They find Jack. All right. Our word was bluff. And it talked about the bluffs at the beginning and again at the end of the chapter. So bluffs are um, high ground 
or high cliff sides. formed by moving water. And I believe we wrote about those back in the fall when we did our landform books. So bluff can also mean to pretend that you have something really good and you don't. You could bluff somebody. But in this case, it is the other definition, which is a landform. So high cliff sides formed by moving water. So bluffs form when there's a creek or a river. And as the water moves through, it eats away, it erodes away the land on each side and it digs its channel further and further and further and further down until eventually you have these high, high sides on both sides that rise up really tall, which is very hard to draw two-dimensionally. But um, bluffs are the high land next to the moving water. If you've ever been um, anywhere along the Missouri River, if you've crossed the bridges or you've driven through um, the parts of Omaha or Council Bluffs that are close to the river, um, you'll see that they're very high. There's hills, they call them bluffs, that are right along that river where the water has cut down through the land. All right, let's get our trifles out. Oh, you should have written that either around the word bluff or on the back. And if you didn't get that written down, paused, move the video back, and copy what I wrote. Don't get frustrated. Go back and try it. So now we are going to write our four events that were the most important events in, this, in the chapter. So let's think about where did the chapter start? What were they doing at the beginning, the first? What was the first thing they did? They drove towards the creek. So in box where it says first, we're going to write, they drove towards the creek. And then the second thing they did, obviously, the next one, is they crossed the creek. And we learned that's called fording. So we're going to use that word. They forded the creek. And we're going to write that in number two. And that was very dangerous. That's going to lead to number three. What happened in number three? The water rose and almost swept the wagon. Water rose and almost swept the wagon away. So make sure you write that down. Again, if it goes too fast, stop your video, pause it, copy it, and then move on. And then, unfortunately, what happened last? No, they made it to the other side, but Jack was missing, wasn't he? So let's write that down. They made it across. These are compound sentences. But Jack is missing. 
write that down where it says, finally, they made it across, but Jack is missing. It's going to go in your last one. All right, I'm going to hold it there for just a minute so everybody can see it. Number one, two, three, and four. Now there is no response this time for you to share with me and um, you are just going to copy it and then I will see that you did it with me when you turn in the trifold, uh, which won't be this Friday because we won't be finished with the trifold, but it'll be the next Friday, which I think is like April 10th will be when we turn it in, but we'll turn it in when we're finished. Sometimes you'll share stuff with me on Seesaw, sometimes you don't. So, until our next chapter.